These are the intercessions. Okay. Um, Thank you. I'm going to adjust the microphone to whatever height you need. Okay. Uh, after you do the first reading, uh, if you want to take a seat okay. in one of those chairs, the cantor will sing Psalm 23. Okay. And then you can come back and do the second reading. Okay. And after that, you join your fam. Good deal. And um, she mentioned something about. Of the faithful? No, no, petitions? no. Uh, petitions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked one of the servers uh, right. if you would be willing to do that, and so one of the servers is prepared to. Oh, do great. That. Perfect. Well, sounds so, good. Um, and I'll um, I'll give you a cue. Okay. Um, Procession. We'll do some blessings okay. at your grand uh, on your grandfather's remains. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the chair and lead us in an opening prayer. After the opening prayer, I'll invite everyone to be seated for the reading. Okay. And that'll be your cue to to come. And do that. Uh, okay. Right. Perfect. Great. Thanks.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Ken died with Christ and rose with him to eternal life. May he now share eternal life with Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, Ken, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grants that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if to others indeed they seemed punished, yet it is their hopeful of mortality, immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. is my 
shepherds, oh, nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, oh God, beyond my wrongs, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized in his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, as we gather, Terry, to you and to Mary Jo and to all of the family, I think there are some who came in who I haven't met yet, just want to offer you our condolences. Uh, and just know that we've been praying with you, uh, praying for you, and you will continue to be in the, the prayers and hearts of this community uh, as the weeks and months uh, pass. Um, you know, we gather here with probably a lot of different things in our hearts. Um, for some of us, there is probably sorrow. For some of us, there may be unanswered questions. For some of us, uh, there may be uh, other things just from our uh, life experiences and situations. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge that whatever we find in our hearts, it's okay to let that speak. It's okay to let that have a place at the table of our hearts. It doesn't have to control the conversation but it also doesn't have to be kicked out. The Lord wants to meet us right where we are um, and in that place to renew in us the promises he has made to us through his son. We heard of those promises in our readings today and in particular our second reading uh, about how through baptism we are united to the death of Jesus so that we can be one with him in his resurrection. That's what we keep coming back to and keep inviting um, the Lord to to fulfill uh, as we grieve and process and heal. Um, I only met Ken a couple times, and at that point he had been in the nursing home for a a stretch. Uh, And Terry, as we sat down and you shared some stories with me about him the other day, you mentioned that he was a mail carrier uh, and proud about being a mail carrier. And I noticed all the the mail trucks that you had set out at the the wake last night. Um, You also mentioned that he had a a beautiful voice and sang a lot, particularly in the nursing home, which for some was too much and too loud. But for, for Ken, it was a way that he... Um, uh, uh, something he loved to do. Um, As we invite the Lord to be faithful to his promises to Ken and to us, uh, we know that all those promises come through his gift of the Holy Spirit, which fills our hearts with forgiveness and peace. And so I just want to offer to you two simple ways uh, in which you can continue to journey uh, on, uh, with the Lord in that process of forgiveness. Um, recognizing a, a couple things that, that I think are helpful. Um, it is God's forgiveness of us that allows us to have forgiveness on one another. Uh, and our forgiveness is not a cheap thing. It's not something that we, we can just speak once and be done with. But it's actually something that involves wrestling and struggle. Because forgiveness means facing the harm that we have received and bringing that into relationship with Jesus. Two simple ways that we can do that. One is by offering masses for people who we either want to forgive or ask for their forgiveness. As we're going to pray in a little bit in the preface, Death changes things, and in some pretty drastic ways. But it does not end relationships, because God's love is stronger than death. The second practice of forgiveness that I would just invite us to consider uh, is just a simple prayer where we can gather with whoever we need to gather at the foot of the cross. 
and there be able to say what needs to be said in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of our God who died for each of us and who desires to lead each of us to his Father's house. And so as you continue um, to grieve and process in different ways, I'd like to invite you in, in this moment to participate in what is an ancient Catholic tradition. You see, as Catholics, when we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we enter into the most perfect prayer that Jesus offered his son on the cross. And that prayer is the most powerful prayer we have access to. This Eucharist will be offered for Ken, for his healing, his forgiveness, his reception into the fullness of God's kingdom, and for you as his family and friends. Whatever your needs are, that the Holy Spirit may fill your heart with his life. It is also part of our tradition that when as Catholics we receive the Blessed Sacrament, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, and become one with our living God in this mystery, we can offer our communion for a person or intention. And so perhaps you, you would like to offer your communion for Ken, for his healing, for his salvation, perhaps for you as a member of the family or a friend. Perhaps there's more than one thing that's on your heart today. And that's okay. We bring our hearts to the Lord, asking him to be faithful to the promises he has made to us and to bring about the promise that he made at the beginning of his preaching and teaching, the promise we hear throughout the prophets, a promise that remains very timely now, a promise to heal broken hearts. May the Father's kindness illuminate your story. Let us now stand and turn to God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. And the response to these petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Ken, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may, know, may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate with the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Ken, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated for the preparation of the altar.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, the salvation of your servant, Ken, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Ken, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. i 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Ken, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Our brother Ken has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father. And let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Ken, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us take our brother to his place of rest in peace. <laughs> 